So lovely, lovely connecting with you, Nina. Were we supposed to meet in person or were we always supposed to do a call? I think that there was some hope that eventually I would make my way to London and we could meet there. Uh, I'm actually out in school just outside of London. So I was hoping to catch you while next in the UK, but with, with travel plans, it ended up not working. So thank you for doing uh, I've actually never done Skype for business before, but thank you for doing the call. No, I kind of travel about two weeks a month, maybe more. Oh, wow. Um, so it's just crazy. So I'm in, based in the UK is just such a wrong expression. <laughs> so really in the air. Uh, well, I so hope that you, that you have a good sense of home and that, you know, there's a yeah. some sense of permanency despite all the transit. Yes, yeah, so I think the children do that. They give you a sense of roots so my youngest son is just going through his exams so i'm here at home trying to give him some moral support you're a PhD. Yes. you've done two books you sound like a rocking f woman <laughs> lena i wish that that was the case and i appreciate those words but i mean these these books came out of uh, a very sense of not feeling like a rock star i was um i was lucky enough after college to get money to go to grad school. And so I did that. I did archaeology and I loved it. Uh, and then after that, I found the closest job that I could to for hire anthropology, was, which was working in brand strategy. And we actually did a lot of work for Unilever and Dove in the U.S. So it was sort of this cultural branding sort of model of how how businesses can um, create meaning for people and, and build meaningful products for their lives. And that company that I was working for it ended up after about a year being in it, getting shut down because uh, the CFOs in London actually were mismanaging money. So I was 25 and unemployed and I had no idea what I wanted to do and no idea, you know, where where a job was going to be or if I even wanted to stay in business at all or if I wanted to go back to academia. And so uh, these, these books were part of a year of just the only way I can describe it and how I've been describing it to people is just this period of absolute serendipity and magic where there was a lot of kindness from strangers, a lot of responses to cold messages, including from people like you, uh, to, to talk about these topics that I think are really culturally important and have so much cultural power right now of impact and of purpose. But what do they actually mean? And are they good for us? Are they are they um, being misused? Are they really um, uh, the the way to transform our, our businesses and beyond that, a lot of our social institutions into the future as we think about collective action and more collaborative approaches to making meaningful long term change? Um, so these these books were an accident and they have just been a conversation starter that I am so grateful for. I've by serendipity uh, found this other this job that I now work for in California at a company called IDEO and they're a big design agency and the whole idea there is that you can design you know almost anything and one of those things is the ability to design your life and I think the last year and a half for me have been the exact opposite of that you can't design your life but you can you can design the conditions for something beautiful to happen uh, and, and I think these books are, are a testament to that. And I'm so grateful to, across the two of them, the 40 um, people that wrote 5,000 words, like 20 pages in your son's terms for, for school yeah. papers, uh, for no pay and out of the, the goodness of their, their uh, you know, hearts to share with the, the amazing work they've been doing with the world. And I hope people find value in them. But that's that's the short short spiel of, of where these things came from. What do you do in IDEO? Uh, at IDEO, I actually work on our circular economy portfolio and also working on how we're thinking about uh, our, our role in systems change and being that broker in, in coalitions and, and working with folks uh, like, like Unilevers to help transition from circular economy to, or from linear to circular economy, be part of a bigger coalitions doing that kind of work. You know, Nina, we are uh, hugely passionate about purpose. Yeah. Uh, Purpose-led, future fit. We are. We have put sustainable living, uh, making sustainable living commonplace at the heart of our business strategy. So we are all about, you know, purpose, sustainability, purpose in our brands. We do a lot of work with purpose on our people. 
you know, mm-hmm. people have the opportunity to go through discover your purpose workshops. They can sort of have coaches to help them figure out what they're really purposeful and passionate about. Sure. So easily creating all the development plans for people in line with what their purpose is, et cetera, et cetera. New area, virgin area, not so many companies doing it at scale. But, you know, from all that you've written and all the changes you see in the world, what are the few things you would, you know, share with me as almost advice as or for people like us who are on this journey? Yeah, I mean, in many ways, I think Unilever is among those leading the journey and always have been, which is I've, I've really admired you guys. And I think the one of the reasons that I see Unilever is really being a leader here, at least when it comes to the corporate la- level of purpose, um, is is almost beyond sort of the role of the corporation and the corporations wanting to be heroes and coming in and doing good things. The the next step beyond that, I think, is thinking more about collective action and the bigger system in which the world the world works. And so, you know, one of the big tenets of the the books is that isolated interventions. Uh, has for a long time been how we think that impact will happen, whether that's through an individual product or through an individual uh, philanthropic effort. And what we've learned now is that our problems today are so much more massive. They're so much more interconnected. They're so much more systemic that the hope that those individual interventions over time uh, would add up to many drops in a bucket and create a wave of change uh, is it does not hold to be true. So isolated interventions and the the drops in the bucket model uh, doesn't work for change at the scale and speed that we need. And so the model of of meaningful change and impact has to come from a more a more systemic approach, which means bringing a lot of different people around the table with very different perspectives and learning how to have a conversation among each other to first better see the problems at hand. And then um, identify meaningful leverage points that we can push on together uh, and figure out how we can how we can push on those as a as a sort of collective action uh, initiative. And for me, that that understanding that is the fundamentals for how companies uh, begin to act with purpose and begin to transform their their organizations through purpose to to better interface with the world. And, and, you know, purpose, especially in the States, and I'd imagine a little bit in the UK, is one of these things that's quite ideological. It's um, our company culture, which is an important piece. Um, it's our brand, which is important. But but beyond sort of those those things, it's really purpose as a way to rethink the institution and the infrastructure of business rather than just the ideology. So it's not necessarily about businesses wanting to save the world and the we believe statement about how we can do that. But in in my mind, almost more importantly, about how we're going to change the way we interface with the world. Uh, how do we rethink supply chains? How do we rethink the way that we engage with local communities? How do we rethink the way that we give dignity to our employees? There's a huge meet crisis of meaning right now. And I think so many people are looking for purpose. Uh, and how do we provide that for them in in their work, in the products that we make, in the things that we do in a way that's that's productive and not uh, sort of a, a salve that that, that that might not actually be solving the bigger problems people are facing. Nina, how can I help and support you? The biggest question on my mind right now, and the one that I don't really know what the answer is to or how it how to move forward on it and would love advice on is that convening of unlike-minded people, how how can we get different different parties together? And what have you all learned at Unilever thinking about, you know, big, big systemic challenges? Um, what what do you see as a way that businesses can can meaningfully bring other stakeholders to the table? And and how do you get your own people involved? I, I guess there's there's sort of this like internal purpose and then external systems change purpose. And I'm trying to reconcile those two things in my mind about how you, how we can meaningfully connect the two beyond a sense of like brand or purpose statement. I think for uh, for us a lot starts with the brand and our people. Our brands and our people are the biggest biggest strengths we have. For example, Dove stands for real beauty and it wants to drive change in the world to to accept real beauty, to challenge the preconceived notions of what beauty should look like and to appreciate all shapes, all sizes, all forms. 
And so Dove is constantly at the front end of that, whether it's creating self-esteem workshops that have been now ruled out to 30 million girls and boys too, but largely girls seem to be afflicted more by self-esteem issues than boys at that age. You know, the latest Show Us campaign is all about showing women and men with all sorts of bodies and all sorts of things. So uh, so what then what happens is, it's easier to create a coalition of like-minded people and institutions around such a purpose instead mm. of a generic coalition that's driving change in the world. You know, when you have a coalition of people interested in body image and self-esteem issues, it's much easier to change uh, around that axis of commonality mm. of purpose. So I think it's so, so one of the, and, and the people who make such a coalition possible are our people because our employees naturally gravitate towards causes that they're passionate about. They naturally gravitate towards uh, brands that they resonate with. And uh, lo and behold, they are the people who then can work, reach out to institution organizations because they're always doing research in that space. They're always reading up in that space. They're always staying connected in that space. It becomes easier to bring coalition of partners to the to the table. So I think yeah. these using some of the principles that Jeremy Hyman speaks about in his new power book. And he's a great guy. If you haven't met him, you should meet him. I do. He actually endorsed um, both of the books. He's been a, a really wonderful mentor. And that book, New Power, is one of the most influential things for on for me recently and is the one of the reasons that I reached out to you as well because I know you all did a, a beautiful piece with him. I'd actually love to hear how, how you see um, new power and and purpose coming together. I think that would be a really interesting cross-section. You know, uh, like I was saying, uh, if we want to drive change in the world, and I'm using Dove as an example, almost every of our brand stands for something in the world, mm -hmm. uh, we can only do it by tapping into people who care about that purpose and will make a difference to that cause. So, uh, you know, for example, plastics, we're making some pretty big commitments in plastics, but we need everybody with something to do with plastics to work with us closely on that. Bringing purpose alive almost necessarily means doing it in a new power way. You can't, yeah. you know, drive for changing the sentiment around plastics or building a world that values uh, all bodies. You can't bring these big systemic changes in the world unless you do it in a new power way. Mm -hmm. Purpose and new power inextricably linked. You know, Dove can't live its purpose if it's three and a half brand managers working on it. They need the full set of employees who believe in that cause supporting them. They need families of the employees who believe in that cause supporting it. They need coalition of like-minded people. So to me, both goes together in a very big way. Yeah, that that's really beautiful. And I, if I'm hearing you right, it sounds like the corporation has a really valuable role in um, using brand as a way to sort of set agenda or articulate purpose for this larger group of people to come together and to act in new power uh, mechanisms to to drive change, but also providing sort of the, the manpower in some ways behind that. And I'd imagine some of the, the financial investment as well. Yeah. Um, one one question I get a lot about is moral leadership. And I know Unilever between you and Paul and so many of the, the people that have really put purpose on the map and, and in many ways turned the tide for how companies are thinking about this stuff. Um, does it does it take more than moral leadership? Like I know Paul has now stepped down, and and when someone like you chooses to retire, um, what does that mean? You know, like are are we reliant on on wonderful leaders like you all who who see this and are excited about it, or do you see there needs to be some kind of uh, bigger infrastructural or policy or you know larger mandate to to get more people to more more corporations to think the way that you all do by virtue of your your people at, at the helm? A great question. You know, it has to start with leadership, mm -hmm. but it can't be sustained by a handful of leaders thinking and doing it. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, for example, we invest a lot in leadership development so that the next set of leaders and the next set of leaders and in a new power way, 
most people have more influence and power in today's world than we we can even imagine it's not to do with formal hierarchy anymore it's about yeah. who is influence and impact in the world who is influence and impact within the organization who is seen as an expert on the cause and others will naturally gravitate towards them so mm. democratizing model leadership or getting more people to buy into the broader sense of sustainability and purpose is so important which is why i said we're putting 100% of our employees 100% of them through purpose workshops uh, mm. almost a third have been through it as we speak but we're putting 100% through doesn't matter if you are a, a soap packing employee in a in a factory in taiwan it doesn't matter you're still important you still contribute enormously beyond mm. your soap packing you uh contribute to the cause and purpose that the soap the life boy stands for or any other soap stands for so mm-hmm. making it broader and wider and we call it the inner game and outer game of leadership the inner game is all about a sense of purpose and service personal mastery learning agility that is more important than the 21st century so mm-hmm. uh, you have to democratize it but we're not stopping at that we are also using four acres which is our internal leadership development brand to bring mm-hmm. in coalition partners other partners suppliers into it because a company like unilever or any other company of our size and scale if we use a scale for good we can do so much so as you know we have something like 600000 suppliers who supply to us out of which 150000 are really large Imagine being able to influence six hundred thousand suppliers to have responsible practices in their value chain, having mm-hmm. inclusive ways of doing business, manage plastic in the in in their units or whatever it is. Suddenly, that scale can be used for good in very powerful ways. So to me, it starts with leadership, but it can't be sustained by leadership alone. You have to uh, democratize it, get every individual to be passionate about it, and every mm-hmm. job then there's a there's a way to use scale for good. Oh, I love that. I think the, what I'm hearing in the way you describe it is there's uh using scale for good in terms of, you know, getting those all those supply chain people and and or suppliers rather um to to change practices and then there's also this using a softer power or like a sway uh which seems like the the cultural piece thinking about real beauty or sort of the the larger brand messaging pieces around it. And so I I think that's a really beautiful notion that the brand can use scale sway and then uh ar- through that and around that bring bring various partners I- into coalition uh and and make make forward movement um but there's there's also one thing that you said that has also come up as a lot of questions on book tour which is the relationship between um a personal employee purpose and the bigger corporate purpose and the question i get a lot is well if you know dove's purpose is about real beauty do i as someone working on dove have to have my life's purpose be around real beauty um and it sounds like you're you're getting at something maybe slightly different in the way that you see personal purpose in relation to work and i'd i'd love to hear your thoughts on that i've been through like 30 40000 personal purpose in our company yeah uh-huh. and 95% of them are so what i would say so universal and generic mm. you know so somebody says i do want to play a stronger role for inclusion in the world people say mm-hmm. i want to spend my life so many people talk about giving wings to others to fly so many people speak about being the person in the team who makes the impossible happen so many people speak about um you know being uh, the catalyst for change being the person who negotiates uh, technology more easily than others and wanting to bring that to the team more often than not personal purposes in service of others which is so fascinating to see because at at our at our core we are human beings who thrive from a sense of giving and a sense of purpose yeah it makes us feel so much better about the jobs that we do and about what we do when we know it comes from a sense of purpose there yeah. are very few cases where you will find somebody says all i want to do is work with pets or something like that right and then if of course what you're so passionate about there is no opportunity to live it in your lever of course you should move on and do something else mm-hmm. but like i said 95% of the times you find that things people want to do you know can easily be done on a particular brand or something else james what's your purpose so my purpose is really around leveraging digital um for equality and justice and that comes very much from 
uh, so I, I grew up in Africa um, and, you know, I can see the opportunities that digital bring um, in terms of e equalizing inequality. I think what's been an incredible experience for me within Unilever is I've been able to apply that in the seven different roles that I've been able to do at Unilever in oh, the seven years that seven I've been years. here. <laughs> in seven years. <laughs> This is the experience when you, I mean, what about James, I just use James as an example, but the beauty about Unilever is you can touch anybody in the company and say, what's your purpose? And they will tell you like this, what's their purpose? My <laughs> purpose is to ignite the human spark to build a better business and a better world. I'm all about saying, how can we bring the best of what human potential has, what human beings have to create a better business and a better world? And what will it take to unleash that human spark? So that's my purpose. The point I'm making is, in any job he does, James will approach it with that purpose. So he will do his job differently because his purpose comes from there. But that doesn't mean I can't put James on working on Dove. He will still bring the same purpose to his energy on Dove. Right. So that's how we think about alignment. Because, you know, when you speak in theoretical terms, it can say, oh, my God, if I don't care about real beauty, how can I do Dove? But in reality, when you plot out personal purpose for people, it's more generic. You can float around. There's some people like Steve Miles, who leads Dove for the last 10 years, who's singular in saying, I want to do something for women's empowerment and that's my life and I have two daughters and I'm burnt by this. Great. Right. And he has made a career decision never to move out of Duff for the last 10 years. But 95% of the cases you find, they have a purpose that can be lived on many, many jobs in Unilever. Mm. Not in a few jobs. They can be lived in many jobs and they can make well, a difference I, to many things. I love that and I will quote you uh, both <laughs> and, and, and tell this story as I go out into to more more book tour conversations and more and more people keep asking. Uh, I hope that's okay. There are a few cases where they say, like I gave the pet care example, if there's something I want to do that Unilever absolutely doesn't provide me the chance, go on, go for it, do something yeah. else. I had someone in my team who uh, singularly wanted to do something about uh, a particular kind of mental well-being issue that he or, she had, he, had, he or she had experienced. Sure, go for it. And we support them and they are a coalition working with us. But he felt that he wanted the freedom to do that fully all the time. Go for it. Yeah. So sometimes you can't, but 95% of the times there's no problem at all. Yeah. Uh, that's that's beautiful. I, I know it's um our, our half hour is up and I so appreciate the time. Uh, is there anything that I can do for you? Can What's I? What's the next like, book on? So the the two that are out right now, one is Perspectives on Impact, which is thinking about that shift in the way that we approach systems change. And then the other one is Perspectives on Purpose, which is bringing different uh, or, or how, how businesses play a role in all of that, which you know very well. <laughs> Fantastic. What I'd love for you to do is connect both. How can we use purpose into impact? Because okay. I'd love to chat with you some more because, uh, you know, we haven't cracked the holy grail yet in being able to show that all of this purpose finally leads to superior sustainable performance. Yes, we are performing huh. well, but I want it to be proven without an iota of doubt. Yes. And, and you mean in terms of metrics or in terms of? In terms of metrics, in terms of truly being able to say purpose and impact come together. The yep. more purpose you have, the greater impact you'll have. Absolutely. That's the $50 million question. <laughs> or I guess in, in Unilever's case, probably way more than that. But <laughs> yes. uh, it's an it's a, it's a important one for sure. Well, I, I appreciate both of your time. Uh, James, I'll be in touch. And um, looking looking forward to hopefully saying hello next time I'm in London or if you're in San Francisco. Do that. Absolutely. I do get to San Francisco a lot. I have a son studying in Berkeley. Oh, do you really? Mm. Oh, well, if he, he ever needs like a, a big sister down the street, I'm more than happy to say hello. <laughs> That's great. Well, He's Beth always wondering about what to do in life. So I think he needs a few mentors. <laughs> oh, well, honestly, he can join the club, but I uh, would be more than happy to talk to him. If he <laughs> yeah, the last person he needs advice from is his mother. Other than that, <laughs> it works. See you, my dear. Lovely talking to you. Bye-bye.